The amount of times I go on Facebook and try and tell people about what's wrong, what's going on in the financial system, what's happening with the banks, and it just bypasses people. I think I think people have been privileged to live through a fairly stable yes. 20, 30, 40 years, fairly. Fairly, yeah. correct. And now it's now it might come and hit them like a train wreck. I, I, I think that's absolutely right. And and that's where, you know, again, I, I think, you know, Safe's book has changed the world. Because, you know, I've been I've been carrying this flag for 20 years. I was, I've been a gold bug forever. And I've been a sound money guy all in since 08. I mean, 08 was, you know, the, the global financial crisis radicalized me for sound money. I mean, I became a jihadist, right? <laughs> <laughs> a sound money jihadist. <laughs> and, uh, and um, you know, basically, um, you know, but I was fighting it alone, right? And then, you know, and now I've got, you know, so, so Safe comes out, he writes his book, all 20, 30 year olds read it. And now I got, you know, 20 year old people coming up to me and say, hey, I've seen you on Twitter and, you know, and they're quoting Von Mises, right? I mean, and it's like, I got reinforcements, finally. Yeah. You know, I got some guys with sharp spears, you know, charging the hill, ready to go kill these central bankers. And by the way, they deserve to be killed. And I'm not, you know, I don't hesitate in saying that. I mean, look, I wish I could channel my inner Jeff Booth and be, you know, zen and positive all the time. But on the other hand, you know, the revolutions also need, you know, some, some stone throwers and some, you know, some torch carriers. And so, you know, I'm going to carry a torch and throw stones at these guys because they've, they've got, they've really screwed up our world incredibly. I mean, when you look at what's going on in this system, I'm just blown away every day with the events and how badly they've messed it all up. All right. Well, listen, tell through me, but I've got my son here, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, but tell it through me. Explain what a central bank is and how they fucked the world up. Sure. Well, the central bank is um, the Bank of England, you know, the Federal Reserve. It's, it's, it's a country's authority which con controls their monetary system. Um, the U.S. Federal Reserve was established in 1913. Um, they snuck it through around Christmas time when nobody was there to vote on it. It's really a money trust. And what it allows is for cantillionaires to take advantage of everybody else by printing the money to bail themselves out. And they, you know, they basically control when the money is issued and at what price. And they basically act as, you know, they determined in, based on bank runs. I mean, in the 1800s, the U.S. experienced the largest growth in productivity and living standards ever measured in the history of mankind. From 1800 to 1900, the, the quality of living for the average person went up immeasurably as, as a result of a lot of things. But one part of that was we were on the gold standard. Um, we did experience some financial panics, and banks would occasionally get over leveraged and get in trouble. And so what the politicians and the people who control the Central Reserve or built the Central Reserve determined is we're going to use that to scare people into telling the people we need to have a monetary system that we can control. And so that's what they did. They set up a monetary system they control, and they had the backstop on all of the money that was issued. Do you and, think that was ignorance or malice? Oh, malice. Absolute absolute, malice. Absolutely malice. You don't no. think any part of them thought, like, this is the best way to operate the banking oh, well, system? Okay, to be fair, there were, I'm sure there were people who voted for it who thought that. Yeah. And to be fair, there was, there was a cover story, and that was the cover story. You know, we have these bank runs, they're horrible, and therefore we need to have a centralized system to control them. But there were also people at the table, Warburg and Aldrich and others, who really knew that if we get control of this, man, are we going to be able to make money? I mean, we're going to, this is going to be a thing of beauty. It's going to give us a lot of power. And, and the people in government knew that as well. Do you know what I mean? The, the central government recognized that if we can have control of this, that will centralize power and you know, politicians will you know, be able to go from zero to 60 million in net worth the way Elizabeth Warren has you know, by just, just by holding a political office, right? And so, so yes, some of it was ignorance and, and well-intended, stop bank runs, et cetera. But I think a lot of it was malice. And so anyway, they set this whole thing up and they immediately violated their charter. Immediately. They were supposed to only lend in ex extreme circumstances against good collateral at high rates for short periods of time and pay it back. That's not what happened. World War, World War I broke out. We need a lot of money. They printed it. You know, they and and so that was just the beginning. You know, and 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 then you know you think that was bad. Then they went up and they had a depression in 1920. They printed some more, and then and then they really printed in the 20s and created the largest bubble ever known in the history of mankind, which burst in 29 and created enormous pain for millions of people, including my grandparents, who I heard about it from, and, you know, in the form of the Great Depression as a result of you know as we know Austrian economics and bubbles that burst. So. You know, the notion that a central bank should be in control of the money supply, I mean, it goes back to, you know, um, you know the Rothschild fellow who stated, you know, give me control of the money and I care not who makes the laws, right? I mean, it, it, really, it really is that. And, and so the people who are at the money spigot and can control it, and I mean, if you know when things are going to be inflationary and you know when things are going to be deflationary, 
you can become filthy rich because you basically are controlling the market and you can front run the market. And that's, what hap that's what's happened. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me how much these fiat contillionaires have benefited. I mean, I've got people I went to Harvard Business School with who, you know, basically were at the bottom of my class, not particularly bright guys, but got into the right place at the right time. And they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars today. And, and it's because they were in a system where their particular business really, you know, benefited, mostly private equity, their particular business really benefited from free money. You know, they were able to borrow at extremely low rates, lend it out at extremely high rates or, or invest it at high rates of return. So the cost of capital was low, their returns were high. I mean, you know, look, you give me money at 0% and you show me opportunities where I can make 6, 8, 10% and I can lever it up, I'm going to get rich too. Mm. It's not that hard. I mean, you know, you can do it, but especially if you know that when it goes tits up on you, when the, when the trade goes bad on you, they're going to come bail you out, right? I mean, look at Ken Griffin, right? He runs Citadel, okay? He should have been bankrupt. He should have been bankrupt. He, he should have been bankrupt. But, but I've been told by a good source, could be wrong, but it's a good source. As you know, Ben Bernanke is on his board of advisors. Mm -hmm. Ben Bernanke is, is paid $20 million a year by, by Citadel. That's what I've been told. I don't know if it's true. It's a rumor, but it would make sense. Because when the fl things flipped in March of 2020, he was, was this bankrupt. GameStop. Uh, no, I mean I don't, he may have been involved there too. I don't know his role. There was in another that firm that were backed up after GameStop because they were possibly. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not as familiar with that one. But 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 going back to the you know the the when the you know when when we went into a crash in March mm. of 2020, you know I, there were swap lines given to these guys. You know the risk parity trade was protected. You know, very much like what happened over here when when all your you know LTI stuff blew up, right? Yeah. yeah. Or is this what happened with Silicon Valley Bank? Well, that's a whole another story. I mean, yeah, to a degree, that is what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. I mean, the the story there that I find most amazing. I find a couple things about that story amazing. One, in one day, forty two billion dollars went out the door. I know. In one <laughs> day, unreal. I mean, APIs. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're talking point and click, move money. I mean. You know, uh, think of how fast that is for that amount of money. I mean, if and when a monetary collapse comes, it could happen really, really quickly. That blew my mind. Second thing about that story that blew my mind is that black letter law from Dodd-Frank, which was hammered out over you know, a couple of years with a lot of involvement by all kinds of senators, was we are not going to bail out the banks anymore. You know, the depositors are going to have to take the hit. That's a fact. And that was the black letter law of Dodd-Frank, okay? And they just violated it. You know, in the space of, you know, Silicon Valley Bank gets upside down. There are a bunch of wealthy people who have their money in Silicon Valley Bank. You know, Bill Ackman's crying like a baby on Twitter. You know, he's, I mean, he's just disgusting. And, um, you know, a lot of people are lobbying in Washington, D.C. There's a fear of bank runs. There's a fear of bank failure. You know, we're going to change black letter law. Nope, we're not. We're going to make the depositors whole. We're just going to step. And even on the day it happened, and this is in my quarterly letter, which will be out next week. On the day it happened, Janet Yellen was on CBS Face the Nation and said, no, no, we're not going to bail out the bank because Don Frank prevents that, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to do a bailout. Okay, fine. That's what she said. That evening, the same, six hours later, that evening, they bailed out the bank. You know, they came in with, a, you know, the BTFP program, which we all, you know, um, jokingly call buy the fucking paper. Yeah, buy the fucking paper. <laughs> the buy the fucking paper program. And they, um, and they um, you know, they bailed out the bank. And they said it wasn't a bailout, but of course it was a bailout. Of course it was a bailout. Yeah, right. Because these banks would have failed. They, they, they all would have failed and there would have been contagion. Yeah. And by the way, I mean, to me, that's just the first crack in the dike. But hold on. It, yeah. So do you think they bailed out the banks because they were bailing out their buddies? Or do you think they bailed out the banks because of the fear of contagion? Because it's, it's definitely different scenarios. Yeah, you're right. Um, I think everyone had different motivations. I think I think they're right. both, some of both. I'm probably greater fear of contagion. Yeah. That they, you know, that they stand ready to backstop the system and they know that, you know, this I mean and and this is this is what happens when you build an unfragile or a fragile system on an unsound premise. I mean the premise that Keynes started off with is fundamentally unsound. You know, growth is good, unlimited growth in a in a finite resources planet. I mean, that just doesn't fucking make sense. It does not work. I mean, if we if we grow un, in an unlimited sense with limited resources, it's not going to work. So an economy, the, the right way to run an economy should be based entirely upon efficiency. Mm -hmm. It's all about how can we get more for less input. That's what it's all about, right? This is deflation. This is this is Jeff's yeah. brilliant. This is Jeff's brilliant thesis. Yeah. Right. We need to live in a deflationary world. Therefore, we need a currency which matches that world. 
So we're trying to push an inflationary currency story based on Keynes' wrong premises against a deflationary world that needs more efficiency, not more growth. And that's where, that's, where the, that's where the collision is. Right? But it's such a huge flip for people. Oh, yeah, nobody you know, gets it. It's not like saying we need to withdrew, uh, um, it's not like we're saying we need to um, reduce interest rates by 1%. It's not yeah, like we're saying yeah. we, you know, uh, like we need to make these little tweaks. It is a complete fundamental <laughs> rethink understanding of the entire economy. That's exactly right. And that's why it's a fourth turning. I mean, it's, it's like, and, and it's stunning to me that, that, this, that this mass delusion has gone on for so long. But yeah, I mean, I, I almost, I mean, a perfect comparable to this is, is you know, is, is, is the physics around the planets and the earth, you know, and revolving around the sun. I mean, everyone believed, you know, until Galileo came along, yep. that, you know, the planets and the sun had a certain relationship to one another and they were just fundamentally wrong. And, and, and that's, it's the same kind of a, a paradigm shift. I mean, people are just fundamentally wrong. They've been trained to think in a way that doesn't make any sense. And, and, and they also have recency bias because, I mean, you know, I, I've got this in my letter as well. I mean, Herb Stein, who was an economist in the Nixon economy, in the Nixon administration, had a great line. He said, he coined what he called Stein's law. If something cannot go on forever, it will end. <laughs> it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. But but this is this delusion has gone on for quite a period of time. Yeah, for quite a period. And 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 I, and I know a lot of people on Twitter and otherwise who tell me it's going to go on for another twenty or thirty years. But I would submit to you that the mathematics prevent that, and that's where Foss has it right. Okay, it's just simple math. It can't. It can't because we're the the, the lines are be, they're going parabolic straight up. 